It's very strange to make a video review for a title in which you see so many problems and which you really don't like, but which you somehow manage to enjoy. I know how does it sounds, but it doesn't matter. I have very few good things to say about the latest Platinum Games Babylon's Fall. But one of them even sting my eyes. Playing this title, I actually enjoyed it, at least for a completely mechanical perspective. It just proves that mechanical pleasure doesn't really make the game, and it doesn't even make the gameplay necessary if that cap price is important to you. Gameplay is a king. It is the largest project and the latest project from the famous developer uh, of the Platinum Games and represents the joint efforts of uh, a foreign mansion studio and published Square Enix. It's a game as a service model, hack and splash co-op RPG experience, say it in 10 times fast, but it's of course a simple formula, kill and slaughter but with friends, but an occasion. Okay, the formula is not simple, now I have to make a Destiny and Marvel Legend had a child, Babylon's file. Well, I think I explained. The premise is uh, relatively simple uh, and almost as it was the transfer directly from the Sam Laser No anime. You know a slave, one of many, and you managed to survive very dangerous transformation. When the Gideon Coffin was forcibly imposed on you, now you have to go with the Ziggurat to so maybe cure your slow oldness for a disease called the Blue Sun Skies. Yes, nothing here sounds simple actually. Let's start from the beginning. Gideon Coffin is an interesting device that allows your avatar, the Sentinel, to carry four weapons at the same time. At first glance, it makes your character look robust because all four weapons are always visible, but now they do not actually affect the agility of your avatar and look like holograms until you use one of them to destroy the oncoming enemy. What do holograms in a predominantly fantasy environment? This is not a question. They materialize in the hand of your Sentinel and look very dangerous. Otherwise, it hands to the backs with a similar way to weapons they normally do in the near aftermath. Slot machine game for example. The sentence for weapons that's not only time sounds convenient, especially when you realize that those four slots don't limit you in any way and the type of weapon and they occupy. Sword sledgehammer and two more sword sledgehammers, a rifle, it does not matter. The game always leaves the choice to you depending on how you choose it significantly affect the rotation. So choice is direct reflection of your unconscious on consequent style of a play and access to hack the slash the titles. Because fighting in this game is just that hack and slash, so far, so good. However, all the variation and deep of this system stops here. Because once you think into the set of weapons that suits you best, the complexity of the flight itself is absolutely non-existent. While you may be cutting with a sword and pounding with a sledgehammer, I'm also cutting a sword but shooting with a bow and arrow waist versa. The number of potential moves and variation of the team is terribly small, so the complexity in approaching different situations that is presented in the above mentioned game, now I automatically assume here. The number of situations is also small. Whenever there are enemies who are fast or enemies who are sluggish but defend themselves with shields in absolute irrelevant once you defeat them for the first time. They always come in groups and always in the waves in every instance of the fight, which are otherwise called the captors. I don't know why the fights with the levers are ca captors, maybe it's about the artistic freedom, which seems to be a lot of in this game, but more on that later. Of course, you are divided by four captors on the four fights for the end of each level in the early stages of the game. Your goal is to claim to the tower that the game is called Ziggurat, and your motivation is quite obvious. So, you were told by the empire you own since you are a slave in this game. I leave the motives on the empire to you to explore, although it's not clear that you will want to. Your heroes and heroines can be one of the three races, each of which is so negatively different that choice seems completely cosmetic and at the same time aborts in this regard because in all three cases it is the human race. So they were chosen to clip the Zikra out using the powers of Gideon Coffin who would, if there is nothing the case, kill them at the first contact. What does Ziggurat Climbing actually look like? From the central hub you are used to be you played any co games in the past 10 years that you share with your players in a similar way to Destiny. You approach where you start individual missions, each representing one step Ziggurat. There are individual levels on dungeons that you can cross along with your friends, although it is mostly likely that if you are not alone. They will be complete strangers, the levels are very linear and unsprinting, painfully obvious and colored by periodic flights. The above mentioned captures, which you will make either fall asleep or will simply forget that you have been mechanically pressing the same buttons in the same order for 10 minutes. Go through enough missions and one of the boss will be waiting for you. Equally monotonous, repetitive and uprising, I definitely don't recommend you to try kill the first yourself, because doing so means taking so negatively low value from the HP bar with every swipe that you will need half an hour 50% of the boss. Platinum games at Square Enix in this case have an obvious counter-argument. It's only 
one word we have to hear, grind. Yes, the alternative will be to repeat the first three missions so many times that I stopped seeing the point in playing so that I would have some chances of killing the boss in foreseeable future. At the same time, the real problem does not stem from the white of the boss of the level because they are really really easy by platinum gaze standards and you can squeeze everything so without worries. Now for the first time, weight is really only measured by the time. Fighting barefoot takes too long, well, end your, or just replace the time with the time you will spend in grind. The dilemma is obvious, but there is no choice. Every swing, every block, every dodge or block is simple and masterful. If more focus was paced or completely of the fights themselves, the game would be significantly more valuable. Unfortunately, in this case, we did not get the sea full splatter of platinum. But the gameplay loop itself remains relatively mesmerizing and addictive. Create yourself in the hub, run into the ability in the road, start the mission, complete the mission, create yourself in the hub, rinse, repeat. What Babylon foils is to turn the rotation into a flow state, but it just makes it kind of trash in which look you mock screen at all. There are bones, a potentially phenomenal game. However, Babylon's file always give the impression that other things were more important to him. Uh, the only problem is that apart from microtransactions, I can't figure it out what it will be. It's important to know that the games like the are evolving, such as nature games as service models. It's not clearly that necessary to have to fail or not necessary that it will not suddenly become popular some time later. However, considering the experience I had with the game, I don't see what can happen without Babylon's fail finding its place under the sun.